Imagine you're at a theater watching a complex play. Two reviewers, let's call them Reviewer Analytic and Reviewer Continental, are there to critique the performance. Reviewer Analytic focuses on the technical aspects, lighting, sound design, and the precision of the actor's lines. The approach is meticulous, like dissecting a well-oiled machine. Reviewer Continental, on the other hand, is captivated by the broader narrative, goes into the emotions of the characters, the symbolism in the set design, and the historical and cultural context of the play. This reviewer is less about technical details and more about interpreting the deeper layers of meaning. Continental philosophy differs from some scientific and analytic traditions in its approach to terminology as well. While analytic philosophy emphasizes well-defined concepts for clear debate, continental thinkers often forge their own vocabulary. This reflects a focus that goes beyond pure logic, prioritizing either the invention of new ideas or the reinterpretation of existing ones in fresh contexts, making a standardized lexicon less crucial. At the heart of continental philosophy is the belief that human existence, culture, and history are multifaceted and cannot be fully grasped through pure logic alone. Instead, it emphasizes subjective experience, existential questions, and the critique of modernity. Influential thinkers like Friedrich Nietzsche, Martin Heidegger, Jean-Paul Sartre, and Michel Foucault questioned traditional assumptions and explored themes like power, freedom, and alienation. They sought to understand how historical and social forces shape our lives and how individuals navigate these forces. While the analytic continental distinction can sometimes create unnecessary divisions, both traditions address core questions about existence, meaning, and the human condition. That's continental philosophy in a nutshell. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.